Good morning. Sean here, Mountains Garage. If my voice sounds funnier than normal, it's because I'm getting over a three or four day cold. I haven't been sick in a year and a half with all this uh, self-quarantine and mask wearing, but now that things are starting to open up, the germs are flowing again, apparently. So it'll take a while for the old immune system to get used to all this stuff again. Anyway, you've heard of mission creep. Well, this whole mission in the last month in the shop, I started a massive reorganization project that really had to happen because I just had stuff laying everywhere because it couldn't go to where it really needs to be. And I decided to make that all happen on like the hottest day of the year, three or four weeks ago. And I've been slowly picking away at that, but there's only so much of that you can stand. And then me being me, I've dragged home some extra equipment and more parts which only further complicates it. The garage is still a mess. This time I'm gonna show you some of it. I don't wanna bore you with a whole lot of shop stuff because, well, this, tra this video is about a transmission. So while all this cleaning's going on, you got your brain switched off. I'm actually switched on to dreaming about the next transmission. I am really good in, the, in the, all the videos up to this point. I've pretty much built the same transmission. It's good for 800 to 1,000 horsepower, perfectly cap suitable for the Turbo LS that I'm gonna have. And I've covered that. So in the back of my mind, I should probably collect enough parts. It's more of a, you know, nice to have. What if I went with a better bell housing and went with a better input shaft? I already have a billet hub. We'll call number seven, the transmission that's in the twin turbo Nova. It's a TH-475, it has all my normal stuff in it. It has a billet hub, but it doesn't, it has three stock shafts. The shafts you can replace, the normal shafts you replace in the Turbo 400 if you want to upgrade it to, you know, upwards of 12 to 1800 horsepower, the numbers vary, is the input shaft, which comes with a drum attached because they bore it out and put a bigger spline. The main shaft, which is actually the, what, this is hooked to the low gear shaft, if you want to call it, intermediate shaft. It's called several different things. The correct terminology is main shaft, but so you can replace that. That's actually the most expensive one and the smallest. Go figure. And the output shaft, I typically wouldn't bother with. I don't think I'm ever going to break a stock output shaft at my horsepower levels. But the TH-475 you saw in the lead picture is a nice, thick Chevrolet case. It's one of the best cases that you know Chevy made. It's going to be an 8-volt case when I strip it. It was going to break my heart to cut the bell housing off it because I wanted to run an aftermarket bell housing. I don't mind cutting them off when they're not Chevy because I am a Chevy guy. I don't mind cutting off an Olds Buick Pontiac Cadillac. But in this case, I was going to be whacking off a perfectly good one. Well, as luck would have it, I was hoping as I was doing all this cleaning that I would run across an Olds Pontiac Buick Cadillac case. It'd be way better if it was the heavy duty version because they make two, they have a light and a heavy duty as well, but their heavy duty is known as the best case that GM ever made. The next step beyond that is to buy an aftermarket case, which of course is explosion proof. But I happened to come across the guy that had three of them and they're out in my tractor shed that were dropped off the other night in the rain. Super nice guy. And now my fear is I'm going to drag one in in this video and we're going to strip it is that they've been sitting for over 40 years. Legend has it. They got writing on them what they came out of. I think it's a 68, a 70, and a 72 Pontiac. They're all Pontiac. And I'm hoping there's enough pieces there to obviously cut the bell housing off and the cases are usable, but they're the long output shaft. Well, they made different versions. This is, let's call this the medium output shaft, which right off the bat, rolling around on a, on a two wheeled dolly, they don't fit through doorways. They don't fit past everything I'm used to wheeling the short shaft 400 version. So back to the output shaft, I didn't have one. I can take the one out of the 475, but eventually I'm going to want to use the lower units out of those three Pontiac transmissions. 
So I got shopping online and a used, uh, it's a nine inch output shaft that makes a four inch tail housing short shaft 400. So that's how they're classified. You look them up both ways, they're nine inches long, but they make the for the four inch tail housing, the short one. They want more for a used one than I could buy an ATI output shaft and it's on its way. So now I had the ATI input shaft, I had the ATI output shaft, I'm building the best Turbo 400 for myself that I've ever built. I might as well source the intermediate or main shaft, whatever you want to call it. So I shopped around and also I bought the Jegs house brand, but it is made in USA and it's 300M uh, rated at 1100 horsepower at 4,000 pounds. I'm only 3,000 pounds, so it's more than suitable because I think the stock one was suitable. This is going to be more than adequate, but now mentally I've got three aftermarket shafts. I'm going to have an aftermarket bell housing. We're going to go over the individual parts. And yeah, let's go over the shop first and then we'll get back to the parts. We'll briefly pause at what will become a race transmission, believe it or not. And at this point, I'm only using the lower unit out of it. I'll use the other pieces in different transmissions, but it almost seems a shame and also unnecessary. I just want the straight cut planetary lower unit out of it, which I don't need. I'll never break a helical cut one, but if I'm going to build the best transmission I can, because I'm always building the other one, I might as well do what it takes. Under the twin turbo Nova, I set up a bunch of white tables and it looks way better now because I've processed more than half of the stuff. And I've got it semi-organized. So while it looks terrible, this is what I'm up against. Also, a few weeks ago, I did put the Corvette transmission on this stand. It's all drained and ready to start that video. But as usual, things get sidetracked. What was going on was where this now brake lathe and ladder are. There were three four-foot shelves that were six feet high at six shelves a piece and they were packed with you name it over the years it had really piled up and none of this stuff is junk i haven't really thrown away anything yet i'm just repurposing it so in this space one it's not good to store things in the garage because everything ends up covered in kind of a gray mung just dust and stuff you know they'd be way better in a storage box which is pretty much air and mouse tight it's outside, but it's not that far outside. So in this area, I never intended for a brake lay there. That's mission creep as well. But I wanted to put my two time machines, the wheel balancer and potentially the washer. Then I came across this brake lathe. Now, this is a 4000 series Amco. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent using this. I was a police mechanic at one time. And you can imagine mountain tires and changing brakes is what you did. Now I have two good friends that are 20 minutes in either direction from my house that both have the same brake lathe. I could ask them at any point, 24-7, 365, hey, can I turn a couple rotors? And they would say yes. I've never asked them, but that's the level of friendship we have. They know who they are. When I worked for the large municipality, I've mentioned this before, I was spoiled to have access to all these tools like the valve grinder, the brake lathe, regular lathes. We had everything pretty much. And if we didn't have it there, then I'd have it at home. So I was a more equipped shop than when I left there in 2016 and came home to work. And I've been collecting stuff ever since. So in the back of my mind, I'm looking for a good brake lathe. But I don't want to spend a lot of money. You see these all the time for... 600 to a thousand dollars and they usually most of the pieces are missing These don't look like this So I found a different series Amco, which is not this is the most popular one Pots are readily available Still I believe they still make this So I found this one listed in New Hampshire it was listed funny, so I don't think anybody would ever call on it. So there was some misspelling and stuff. They pretty much copied what was written up there, but they spelled break different. It was $200 the best offer. When I got there, I could see that 
it looked like everything was there. It was all, it didn't look like it does now, that's for sure. I've got almost a week into cleaning and polishing, especially all the adapters, which now look brand new. Other than I got to sandblast the aluminum ones at some point, but all the metal ones I've had to polish individually by hand. Everything was there, including, it's, it's white now like it's supposed to be, but there was this black plastic thing that I really thought was one of the little uh, things you stick through a radiator to hold like a transmission cooler on that'll eventually kill your radiator. And this is, was the piece on the back that actually held it steady. No, that's the shear gear that goes in here. These are all metal gears, but they give you one plastic one if you were to jam up the feed. It just shears the shear gear, and when this was new, it would have come with one. That was still here. Everything was here. There was one bolt missing out of this, and it was in the package. I mean, everything was there. It was in a diesel repair shop, so it never got a lot of use. It just sat around. So, I'm saving it. I'm almost done saving it. It's almost ready for use. That's that. I can already tell this video is completely derailed, but... While we're looking at stuff, this is my 47 Ford cab. It was out in the storage box where I had to put the shelves, so everything's coming inside so I can work on it and find room and work in a home for everything. So this is from Colorado. The Colorado Highway Department, as legend has it, somebody chopped it and never finished it. It is, you know, it's got doors and everything. I don't think I've ever been able to show it to you because it was stuffed in the box, but... Here she says. She's going to be mean looking. And I've got everything except the bed. I was sitting in these seats the other day joking I was in my 49 Chevy. Well, the 49 Chevy cab had to come inside as well. This is was half a half done hot rod, if you will. I have everything except the doors. I did find a set of used ones in a junkyard. Of course, they're used. They're, what, 60, 70 years old. But it'll give me all the mechanisms, and then I can maybe buy some new shells or something, because this is a really solid truck. I have the bed and everything for this one, and a frame, and a bunch of other stuff, so it's uh, on the list of projects. And yes, it's stuffed under an almost finished project. All I have to do is the interior on the Nova, but that's uh, going to happen. Meanwhile, outside, the sun is coming up gonna be a beautiful few days three or four days in a row gonna be nice out here in the tractor shed i must have just dragged the one that's on the wheeler in and get looking at it but these are the heavy duty bugles pontiac cadillac medium tail housing we'll call it i fear they're clean because they've been out in the rain hopefully sealed up they all have torque converters in them so that probably saved the front pump well, there's only one way to find out. Let's drag one in. But before I drag that transmission in, let's go over the pots that are sitting on the bench in the way. We've gone over the direct drum and the forward drum and the intermediate clutches in previous videos. The bell housing I chose is an ATI. I chose it for a few reasons. One, Unlike the Ultra Bell, where they cut this off, grind it down, and charge you extra to leave it on, if you want an LS specific Ultra Bell, you have to pay $60 more. And you can see where they cut it off. In this case, they leave it on, and you have the bolt required for an LS engine. I'll be putting a helicoil in this one, because I use that to bolt my dipstick to. What I like about it, it's very compact. It doesn't have the Olds Buick Pontiac Cadillac bolt pattern, so it doesn't have the ear sticking up like the Ultra Bell. Again, I'm, I'm putting it on a Chevy, so I'm good. One of my favorite features, other than the lower cost, this thing is, depending on where you shop, less than $300, right around $300. Instead of having O-rings on the bolts, like the Ultra Bell, this has a gasket. It's contained in, I bought extras in case I need to service it, but it's, it's like a turbo 400 pump gasket, but there's no holes for where well, the oil would go through. It's just solid with the exception of the eight holes to hold it on. So you can set that right on your pump, 
drop the bell housing on, maybe a drop of Loctite on the bolts. I'm sure that it says that in the instructions. It comes with the bolts. And this thing is bomb proof. I mean, it is thicker than the Ultra Bell even. It's awesome. I'm a fan already and I haven't even installed it, so. I'm thinking out loud as I'm shooting the video, but I really don't need to helicoil this hole. I had been doing that because I had to run the flex plate shield and that requires that bolt hole, which of course is not present on the LS engine. But in this case, I don't have a flex plate shield. I can use a dipstick that bolts over here, which is far more common. There's only one dipstick that I've found that fits with the metal flex plate shield like I have in the Nova. So I could just leave that alone and put a different style dipstick in it. Even simpler. So the transmission tunnel clearance in the Nova, I have the flex plate shield in there now on transmission number seven, we'll call it. Now I don't need it. So the, I have an SFI flex plate. I now have an SFI bell housing cover in it. This goes on just like that. Makes working around the bell housing bolts a lot easier. I went ahead and bought another safety shield for the body because this is still required if you have a stock case. If you have an aftermarket case, you don't need this. You have one of these already and the case itself is just like this, bomb proof. So I went ahead and bought one and when I pulled the transmission out of the Nova, it's kind of a hassle to fit these on there so it'll just stay with that transmission. Reality, it's probably gonna get sold. So this would be transmission number eight and this one I'm not gonna sell, I promise. <laughs> I have a, a CK Performance what was supposed to be a first and second gear start, the instructions say it's only a first gear start. I need to call them today, see what's up with that. It's not the one I ordered, but I'm not sure I really need the second gear start anyway. I found a couple pans on clearance. This is the Transmission Specialties. It's pretty much the same pan sold by everybody. I like that it's a heavy cast aluminum. It really does a good job supporting what's already a heavy duty case. It only makes the whole thing stronger, so it's probably going to get this pan. Also on clearance, I'm always shopping the internet for, you know, returns and stuff like that. You can find them everywhere. I got a really good deal on this. It's an ultra deep pan, but the pickup depth is the same as this. So I got to believe the last inch of fluid or so just sits there. It does get cooled and probably transfers because there's cooling tubes that shoot through it. I like that it's already tapped eighth inch for a temperature sender. It has a nice drain plug. I got a wicked deal as usual, so I have it, not for this transmission. I don't believe I said Transbrake valve body when I was talking about that box, but yes, it's a CK Performance Transbrake valve body that I may or may not use. Also, returns and clearances. I pretty much made this in a video, well, a copy of it, my version of it, and here's the genuine article. It's beautiful, not a scratch on it, other than it wasn't in an original box. And it was super cheap, comes with all the fittings. It's obviously a overflow tank for a Turbo 400. So that'll find its way on there, right next to its, you know, they're all cousins and brothers here, sisters. They all come from the same place, next to an ATI. I didn't know I was gonna be an ATI salesman, but here I, here I go. I've been researching and experimenting, which means paying money for something to see if it's any good. Reusable pan gaskets. I've been using the Moroso. Sometimes I find those for $28 to $30. Pretty expensive gasket. Probably the most expensive Turbo 400 gasket out there. But so far, they've worked out pretty well. Uh, I saw that Summit Performance had their own. This thing's $15. It's more like the 4L80 one that has, you know, the hard stops so you can't over tighten it i uh, haven't tried it on a stock pan with has the raised rib like i've showed you but for a flat pan with a flat pan rail i'll have to try it it doesn't say it doesn't work with the raised rail but it'd be an experiment but with this cast pan here this will work just fine so i actually bought a couple of these while I was buying, because they look pretty decent. And sometimes when I build a transmission for somebody, they want the reusable gasket because they've seen them in my videos. 
Hey, I want one of them fancy gaskets. Well, now I got them in stock. Over the past few months, I've got duped a few times. Even by my local pot store, they'll show this filter with the opening so you can't see the yellow Dacron material, which is what you want. This is just a screen filter, the race filter, if you will. It's actually an Allison 545 filter that we've talked about. Uh, this is not one of the bald ones that I bought, but I bought at least 10 that were listed like this. The picture shows an open element. The pot number crosses over 50 ways on every site there is, and I get it, even Wix. I got it home, and it was still the yellow filter. So I got a lot of those filters that I need to do something with. But then I found a closeout. The guy was selling all kinds of Baldwin filters. The 19992 pot number. This is not one, but it's just like this, only made in the USA. It even comes with the Allison 545 gasket, so I've got 54 of those out in my storage box. Because I bought half the load first. The guy broke it up for me. So I bought the first 26 or 7 and got them here to make sure they were correct, and they were. And then I negotiated and bought the other half, so I'm not going to have to buy filters for a long time. But I was going the wrong direction in the filter department. I was spending lots of money for something I really don't need. I mean, I can use them on street transmissions, but I don't build a lot of street transmissions. So that's just my problem. But just to be clear, if you're building a race transmission, this window needs to be open just like this one. If you're looking at yellow material, it's too restrictive. Well, I managed to get it this far. I have to pull my vise out and put the adapter on there. I'm going to strip it on this bench and try to set the camera up and go over some stuff as I'm stripping it. Unfortunately, it's going to have to be another video. So this one's already too long. I did pull the converter out. It looks like the pump's going to be fine. The case itself is, I say it's dry because it's been probably out in the weather, but this is the only one that didn't have a dipstick in it. But so far, I think it's usable. I'll be pre-soaking all these because I don't want to pull the threads out of the case. It's going to come apart kind of hot, I think, but that's okay. It's all part of the adventure. So stay tuned. I'm going to strip this transmission later today. And the video should be out tomorrow. So thanks for following along. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you tomorrow.